Did you know that so many people asked us what a great starter microscope was that we created one? That's right! You can get the Journey to the Microcosmos microscope at microcosmos.store. And we've also got filters and slides and other supplies, even this very cool Hydra t-shirt. All of that and more at microcosmos.store. One of the most spectacular details of animals in our world is just how varied their colors can be. When you look at birds, for example, you'll see everything from mundane grays to iridescent blues. Birds sometimes craft those colors using melanosomes, an organelle that holds the pigment melanin. And nothing about that is particularly unique to birds. We have melanosomes as well, and we use melanin to make our various skin colors. So then why don't we ever shine with the same iridescence as birds? Well, we could just blame it on light. It's always doing weird things, playing tricks with what we see. So let's just say that light is doing something funny and then call it a day. Except that's very unsatisfying, isn't it? If light has so many tricks up its sleeves, that only makes me want to know more about the specific tricks it's playing with bird feathers. And that means we're going to have to start this out by talking about color, specifically pigments. Pigments are the compounds that color everything from our paints to our cosmetics, and we see them all the time in the microcosmos. Perhaps most common of all would of course be the color green, found in cyanobacteria and euglenoids and plenty of other photosynthetic organisms thanks to the pigment molecule chlorophyll. When white light hits the chlorophyll, the molecule absorbs the red and blue wavelengths, but it also reflects the green wavelengths back at us. Which is how pigments work. They are molecules that absorb certain wavelengths, and in turn they reflect a particular wavelength of light back at us, which to our eyes then looks like color. So when we look at these hematococcus and see a mix of green and red, what we're actually seeing is a mixture of pigment molecules reflecting different wavelengths of light. There's the chlorophyll reflecting green and the astaxanthin pigment molecule reflecting red light back at us. And so the lesson we take from pigments is that light doesn't just shine, it reflects and absorbs. But it also does more than that, much more. That became very clear to Robert Hooke, who in 1665 published what is probably one of the most important texts in microscopy history. Micrographia, or some physiological descriptions of minute bodies made by magnifying glasses with observations and inquiries thereupon. This work contained detailed descriptions and illustrations of objects Hook examined under the microscope, including the feathers Hook found from peacocks, ducks, and other birds. Hook compared the structures he saw on the iridescent peacock feathers to pearls, which, as he wrote, quote, do not only reflect a very brisk light, but tinge that light in a most curious manner. And by means of various positions and respect of the light, they reflect back now one color and then another, and those most vividly. As scientists began to better understand what light is and how it interacts with the world around it, they were able to understand what was happening. The light was not getting absorbed and reflected by a pigment, it was interacting with the physical structures within the feather, refracting and diffracting and scattering and whatever else light can do. The result to our eyes is structural color, a color whose wavelength is the result of the structures the light was moving through. And for some structural colors, the angle of the viewer relative to what they're looking at will change the color itself. And this produces iridescence. 
You can think of the difference between pigments and structural color as kind of like the difference between looking at a crayon and a rainbow. When we see a rainbow, we're not looking at colored water. We're seeing light refract and reflect and disperse in those water droplets. Except at the end of the day, a rainbow is a function of the rain and the sunshine in your eyes, making it an illusory object that you can, of course, never touch or find the end of. Feathers, on the other hand, are very tangible, and the structures they use to craft their colors are very present and observable. But before we dive too deep into how feathers use structural color, we should note that birds can and do use pigments as well for their coloring, mixing carotenoids, melanins, and porphyrins for their various hues. But birds can also expand on that range using structural colors. The blues you see in these feathers here are structural color. Blue pigment is unusually difficult to find in nature, so when the color does appear, like in these feathers or in the wings of a butterfly, it is often from structural color. Now, the structures that make that happen are located in the barbules, those tiny interlocking threads that make a feather feel, you know, like feathery. Inside the barbules are keratin and melanosomes, those melanin-containing organelles we mentioned in the beginning of the episode. And it's the arrangement of these melanosomes within the keratin that creates the structures that will, in turn, determine the color of the feather. Now, a lot of animals, including, again, us, have melanosomes. But birds are unique because their melanosomes can be hollow. And the more hollow the melanosome scientists have found, the more iridescent the feathers. And if they produce thinner melanosomes that are shaped more like a flat plate than a rod, the iridescence will only increase. These features of the melanosomes are essentially changing the way that light moves through the feather, crafting a different color. Scientists are still learning about how these structural colors have evolved in feathers, and why there is so much variety in color and iridescence across different bird species. These are structures that once contained pigments, but evolved to contain nothing, because being empty somehow made even more brilliant colors. It is a wild leap to make, but of course evolution doesn't think. If color is produced and it confers an advantage, evolution doesn't care or know how this happened. The photons that would have existed whether or not life ever evolved in our universe, doing a marvelous dance in the empty pigment organelles of a bird's feather. It evolved without anyone ever knowing how it worked. Until us. Until now. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. The people on the screen right now, they are our Patreon patrons. They are the people that allow us to keep on diving deeper into our universe. And as you go deeper, you get closer and tiny things get bigger. And then suddenly you can see things that no one ever saw before. If you want to become one of those people and also get some cool perks, you can go to patreon.com slash journey to micro. We really do appreciate it, and we really couldn't do it without you. If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, you can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there's always a subscribe button somewhere nearby. <laughs>